Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone's Oz, and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Monday the 14th of July 2025. Still plenty to talk about, especially around the winter weather scene across southern Australia, with big storms going into the southwest and the southeast, much needed rainfall, plenty of snowfall, strong winds, the whole nine miles of winter weather will be impacting the southern regions of Australia for at least the next two weeks or so. We'll also have a little bit of rainfall and potentially a storm or two on the cards across southeastern and south central Queensland, after a little bit more cold weather to come through, so all of the details on this plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. But let's get stuck uh, straight off today with a look at the current situation over across southern Australia. Plenty of winter storms to talk about. We've got one low pressure system now moving into the Tasman Sea. That's given Tasmania a few good showers and storms overnight. In fact, some good snowfall accumulations as well onto some of the higher peaks with more showers still moving through this morning. A couple of showers made it up to the Victorian coastline as well, but no more than a couple of millimetres were reported there in the western part of Victoria. It's now beginning to dry off and it's the Gippsland coast line that's now receiving a few showers this morning. Winds aren't really a problem either, just a few strong wind gusts in coastal locations, especially into the exposed coastal locations. But the good news with this weather system here is that it's keeping things a little bit more milder across New South Wales. Minus 9.5 degrees at Ebor yesterday outside of Coffs Harbour. That's ridiculous, especially for how no far north it was. So it's a good system, uh, a, a good thing that this system is going to keep things a little bit more milder. Just starting things off though today briefly over in the southwest corner of WA, we do have that cold front moving through that we were talking about throughout the last couple of days. It's nothing too crazy, nothing too strong. I've had five millimetres in my rain gauge overnight. A couple of places I've had closer to 20 millimetres, so there is a little bit of good rainfall embedded in with this system here, and you can see on the current radar uh, and satellite imagery that the remainder of the front is now beginning to sweep up from the southwest, with the next rain band is expected to arrive into the, into the Perth metro area by around 7.30 a.m. in the morning, so around when this video is going to come out. Uh, in the way of significant rainfall accumulation, so nothing really is expected. A further 10 to 15 millimetres is possible, and a few good showers behind the main frontal system, which has moved through overnight. But apart from that, it looks like the weather situation is going to begin to die off over the next couple of hours. A few showers have actually made it out into the eastern parts of the Whitbolt, and even out into the goldfields as well, and that's good to see, especially because we do need the rainfall out there. At least over the next few days, the weather scene across southeastern Australia is going to be a little bit more tamer, especially into, uh, in contrast to what we're looking at later on in the forecast period. The low pressure system impacting south and western WA is going to move over into the Great Australian Bight through tonight into early tomorrow morning. We're expecting the low pressure system to then collide with the Eyre Peninsula coastline through early tomorrow morning, with a few good spots of rainfall by early tomorrow morning into the early hours of tomorrow afternoon through south Australia and then extending it towards New South Wales, with showers and light rainfall contracting to the northeast of New South Wales tomorrow night and into early Wednesday morning. That low pressure system will then clear out into the Tasman Sea and we'll see another low pressure system develop there south of Lord Howe Island. No significant impacts expected for the Australian mainland and in terms of rainfall tomorrow morning we're looking at maybe up towards about 15 to 25 millimetres through parts of the Air Peninsula between Sejuna down to Port Lincoln. Rainfall accumulations will drop off the further inland you get but we could be seeing some light rainfall as far north as Murray and Roxby Downs. Uh, places that don't typically receive rainfall uh, from some of these winter systems unless they are extremely strong and then that rainfall making it over into the northern half of New South Wales where it falls between 5 to 10 millimetres are possible into the western half of the state and then between 2 to 5 millimetres possible into the northeastern corner of the state but the rainfall like I said clearing out by about midnight tomorrow uh, night. Rainfall will continue for Tasmania though another week cold front coming through on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning so tomorrow night into Wednesday morning another week cold front following closely in behind that on Wednesday night into Thursday morning this one will actually pack a little bit of a punch for the west coast of Tasmania especially in terms of rainfall but we could always be seeing winds up to 110 kilometres an hour through some locations. Not especially strong for Tasmania. That'd be an all-out severe weather outbreak for South Australia and Victoria. But considering we're talking about the west coast of Tasmania, perhaps the most rugged coastline that Australia has to offer, it really isn't a significant weather system by their uh, stretches of the imagination there. But 20 to 40 millimetres of rainfall possible, and that'll extend up in towards Victoria, where falls between 5 to 15 millimetres are possible across the parched western half of the state. Rainfall easing off through Thursday afternoon, clearing through Friday morning morning and it's actually going to be a nice uh, end to your work week before another weather system comes through Saturday afternoon and evening. This will be a strong system but it's going to dive south and impact Tasmania. Again, another system that could give Tasmania a bit of a punch where Victoria and South Australia do escape it. Some rainfall is possible through Victoria and South Australia though Saturday afternoon and evening. It'll likely be a little bit more milder Saturday afternoon and evening as well so snowfall isn't expected and then Sunday we'll get another weather system coming through out of the south moving into Tasmania and then we get the big cold fronts coming through after the 21st and the 22nd of July. 
we are expecting some big systems and some pretty significant winter weather to come through after the 20th of July. And we've been talking about this for the past week and a half now. Uh, significant winter storms can be expected to occur across southeastern Australia. They will impact the southwest of the nation first, of course, but I'll get to that in the next couple of minutes. We are expecting rainfall, strong winds, snowfall, uh, low temperatures as well, plenty of winter weather to come through after the 21st or the 22nd. So what do we know right now? Well, a big time low pressure system building itself up through Monday and Tuesday, the 21st and 22nd of July, respectively. The main frontal system will arrive through South Australia through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. We're expecting the rainfall to then be dragged into New South Wales and Victoria on the 23rd, that's Wednesday. Rainfall is also expected to be heavy on the 23rd through Tasmania. We'll likely see some heavier falls through some of the higher elevations through Tasmania and Victoria. This front is expected to be so expansive and so strong that at this stage in time, it looks possible that it's going to drag down some moist air, moist air from the tropics uh, around Queensland and the Coral Sea, and that could give way to some rainfall across the northern half of New South Wales and even into the southern corners of Queensland as well. When I say rainfall, I do use that term quite loosely. We're not expecting anything too crazy, nothing more than about 50 millimetres or so in this region here, but some more moisture contributing to the significance of this cold front is definitely possible, and as such, rainfall is expected to be very widespread right through the South Australia coastline through much of New South Wales, the Australian Capital Territory, much of Victoria, and then all down through Tasmania, expecting some pretty significant falls. There will likely be a significant weather system that comes through behind this storm as well. We normally see a strong southerly air mass that blows in behind. The forecast models haven't picked up on it on this forecast run here, but yesterday they were calling for a secondary front to sweep up from the south in the wake of this system here. It really does depend on how far south this low pressure system does dive. If we see it, uh, and at this point in time, it looks like this is the most likely possibility here. Uh, the low pressure system tracks across the Great Australian Bight and then kind of traces around the coastline, moves parallel to the coastline and dives south once it gets around to the Tasmania area. Area, then we won't see a low pressure system get dragged up behind this and that will likely save southeastern Australia from the, from the most violent winter weather impacts. But again, anything is possible here and it, it would be unusual for a track like that to happen. But a big storm like this uh, can kind of make its own rules on the weather scene at least. Another big weather system coming through into the last couple of days of July. Again, we're not 100% sure of the details on this one. It looks like the forecast modelling might have got a bit uh, carried away with this one here. You can see a massive low pressure area uh, encompassing the entirety of the Great Australian Bight and much of the Southern Ocean just in general with rainfall extending across in towards Western Queensland. So uh, again, I think the forecast modelling here might have been a little bit wacko, might have had a little little bit much to smoke this morning so we'll take this one with a heavy pinch of salt and we'll like it to take a look at the longer range forecast after about the 25th of July in a future forecast update but definitely some good rainfall coming through nonetheless especially from that weather system the expansive one coming through on the 22nd and the 23rd regardless of how severe that system is rainfall definitely looks to be a guaranteed aspect of this winter weather uh, at this point in time this look at 10-day rainfall accumulations from now out to the 24th of July, and I'm choosing specifically not to include the later part of the forecast period, the 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th, because that's when we have that wacky uh, forecast from the European Centre. So I'm not really looking at uh, giving false information here. So this includes rainfall coming through this week, which is going to be quite healthy across South Australia, Victoria, and especially the west coast of Tasmania, at least another 100 millimetres coming through this week. And then the preliminary rainfall coming through from that cold front uh, on the 22nd and 23rd, which should be about 50 millimetres to the west coast of Tasmania on top of what already falls this week and then about 20 to 30 millimetres through a wide swathe of Victoria extending up to about 50 to 60 millimetres into the Victorian Alps and then above a certain threshold that will fall as snow. Good rainfall also expected across the interior parts of New South Wales and the Air Peninsula of South Australia. All in all just a very healthy forecast here. Those places that need the rainfall drought impacted communities through South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. They're getting all the rainfall that they can handle and it's the perfect type of rainfall as well. Steady but heavy stuff coming through over the next couple of days. Uh, not going to cause flash flooding, not going to cause riverine flooding, but it's enough to just get that ground to keep drinking this much needed water coming through. So this is just great news on the forecast modelling. But those along the east coast of New South Wales that have seen far too much of the stuff over the last couple of months and by extension over the last couple of years, they're looking high and dry over the next couple of days as well. In fact, the next two weeks, not much rainfall coming through there. It's just southeast Queensland. We'd prefer for them to stay dry as well. Again, I'll look at this in a future forecast update, probably a, a Thursday or Friday this week, we'll get to the situation over in southeast Queensland, but there definitely is going to be a little bit of energy and a few shower days across the southeast and the south central parts of the state, most likely this weekend, and then again on the uh, 23rd and the 24th of July. And then it looks like the forecast models are calling for energy to come down after about the 26th of July as well. So it looks like we might head into a week and a half or two weeks of wetter weather into this part of Queensland, but we'll look at that in a future forecast update. 
in terms of the wind speed threat uh, from these winter storms, I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary here. 90 km an hour wind gusts for the mainland looks to be the main threat here, or the, the, the kind of the crux of it, and then wind gusts up around the 120 to 130 km an hour mark for Tasmania, so nothing out of the ordinary. Definitely some strong winds expected across the higher peaks. We're not going to go too far into detail about this because, again, it's just not too much of a threat. And snowfall accumulation is looking to be very healthy across the west coast of Tasmania. They're going to be fully gripped into some of these cold fronts, which means snowfall is expected to be falling low down to about four or 500 metres across the southern parts of the state and down to about 700 metres across the northern parts of the state. And it will be heavy, especially around the Lake St. Clair National Park and into the central rivers and highlands. We're expecting snowfall accumulations to be between 30 to 40 centimetres. Very good indeed. Snowfall, though, through Victoria and New South Wales, not expecting too much of it over the next 10 days at least. It could fall in a bit more dramatic fashion after about the 25th of July. And the reason for that is because these low pressure systems are going to be diving so far south. They're actually going to be dragging in some warmer air through the atmosphere uh, f through New South Wales and Victoria, and that's going to keep snow uh, kind of contracted to only the highest of peaks above about 17 or 1800 metres through both Victoria and New South Wales, which is why we're not expecting too much in the way of snow over the next 10 to 11 days or so. That will change though into the later parts of the forecast period at this point in time. Big time weather systems coming through for the southwestern corner of WA, though. We definitely have some severe weather coming through the, throughout the course of this week. Showers expected to continue throughout the remainder of today. They will ease off this afternoon. A few showers still lingering around the southwest capes through this evening and into tomorrow as well. Another week cold front approaching from the south through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. We'll see a couple of drops of rainfall through the Perth metro area through Wednesday morning and a few good drops of rainfall across the south coastal regions through Wednesday morning into afternoon, clearing through Thursday. In fact, Thursday is looking to be the only fine day this week before the rainfall returns turns on Friday with another weak cold front coming up but out of the southwest. Again, these systems don't look like they're going to give Perth too much trouble. A few drops of rainfall here and there, but for the most part, the south coast is where the rainfall is going to be, and that will also be where the winter weather is, the cold temperatures, the strong winds and so forth, the unpleasant stuff that we don't want to see. Sunday is when the big cold front comes through. We're expecting a strong weather system to move through. This one's going to dive quite far north by the looks of things, which means it's going to drag in a lot of moisture. We're going to get plenty of rainfall Sunday night into Monday morning. Uh, showers, storms, the whole nine miles a bit, and then it's going to drag in some cold air from the south side of this storm. Yesterday, we were talking about a very good chance of snow across the Bluff Knoll and the Perongrup Ranges, or into the Stirling and the Perongrup Ranges, I should say. I am not as confident with that snowfall forecast this morning, but I still reckon that there's a good chance of snowfall both Monday morning and especially Monday evening into Tuesday morning, the 21st and the 22nd of July, respectively. A slim chance, only on the absolute highest of peaks. The atmosphere is going to be cool enough for snow, and we will be seeing that cold air pool come in behind these showers here. Definitely a conducive environment for a little bit of snowfall above about 900 metres or 1,000 metres or so across the southwest corner of WA. But again, it's it can it, it's going to have to be in the Goldilocks zone. The conditions are going to have to be perfect. There's going to have to be showers coming through at the right time. Temperature is going to have to be cold enough. It really is going to have to be that Rolls-Royce setup for snowfall uh, from this winter weather system here. So we could definitely be seeing some Monday night into early Tuesday morning, but I wouldn't be betting the farm on it as much as I would have been yesterday. I was actually very confident yesterday, 45 to 65% chance. Now I'm probably going to give it a 30 to a 50% chance. Still a good chance, but at this point in time, it's very much touch and go. Showers and storms will continue through Tuesday and Wednesday. Another cold front coming through on uh, the 24th and 25th of July, and this is that big weather system that comes through, and it looks like the forecast models break down from about this point onwards. And again, I'll highlight that with the snowfall forecast uh, between Friday the 25th out to Monday the 28th. It is uh, laughable to say the least. Uh, for lack of a better term, the snowfall forecast across southwest WA is laughable. Take a look at this. Four-day snowfall accumulations including the 25th out to the 28th of July. We've got snowfall right through the uh, Darling Ranges outside of Perth. Good snowfall accumulations along the coast down towards Esperance. Now, I'm not for a second saying that this is going to occur here. Uh, looking at dustings of snow throughout much of the week, but with snowfall accumulations down into the Perth suburbs of Byford and Armidale as low as 20 metres above sea level, this is just not going to happen. This is one of those things where the forecast models do break down and they do that sometimes and that's why we don't trust the forecast modelling after a certain time period, especially when there's a lack of congruency, which in this case there is. I'm using this to illustrate the fact that the forecast can break down and it can be unreliable and sometimes it's not worth trusting a forecast after about the 10 or the 11 day forecast period. Whilst technology is getting better, it's still not perfect and it does throw us curveballs like this. The Eastern Earth has a very big snow bias, the southwestern WA as well. It's not uncommon to see snowfall accumulation 
calculations across Southwestern WA on the European forecast modeling. Uh, and that's why I generally just skip snow forecasts altogether for the Southwest of WA because the information is generally very hazy at best. But I'm just saying this to educate. And also if you do make your own forecasts on windy.com, which I thoroughly recommend by the way, just know what to look for. And that's what you get when you've been looking at forecast models for nearly a decade like I have. You, you tend to learn these things and you tend to learn the biases that some of these forecast models have. I'll just briefly touch on southeast Queensland with that rainfall coming through. It is mostly later on into the forecast period after about the 18th of Janu uh, January, July out to the 28th of July. We do have 10-day rainfall accumulation starting to become a little bit more respectable here and there. But again, I would like to take these with a heavy pinch of salt and we'll have to see what actually does materialise out of this. I'll get to a proper forecast on southeast Queensland sometime around Wednesday or Thursday of this week, maybe Friday, depending on how the forecast models pan out here. But it is just more of a heads up. Uh, the last two weeks of July could be a little bit wet across southeast Queensland uh, and into south central Queensland. I'm not talking about a rainfall event or a tropical depression coming down the coastline. I'm more talking about lines of convection and showers moving through, which will just provide that pesky drizzly to moderate rainfall uh, bands that are going to uh, kind of burst onto the scene across parts of southeastern Queensland. Nothing too significant, nothing that's going to cause flooding, but it's more kind of that pesky weather that turns their mud into muddier mud across southeast Queensland. They don't need any more rainfall that for sure so we're definitely not hoping for this rainfall to come into fruition that is for sure and that's gonna to have to do it for today's forecast update i do hope you found it enjoyable or informative preferably both and if you have then please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it as well the support lately has been much appreciated there's still going to be plenty to talk about over the next couple of days, so don't go anywhere. Subscribe. Uh, a special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. The, their names are on screen right now, and I could not only show about them. So, of course, their support is also much appreciated. But that is going to do it for me today, and I'll catch you all at the next storm. Goodbye.